welcome back. You know how much I love introducing you to my favorite people and people who I believe are just doing amazing work in the world. You know, I grew up in a house where um, vegetables were unrecognizable from what we know them to be today. I mean, they were literally cooked within an inch of their lives. And <laughs> I'm pretty sure there was absolutely no nutrition left whatsoever, but it made the plate look colorful. And my mother thought that was what she was supposed to do. If my mother knew half the stories I tell on this show, she would never talk to me again. But <laughs> But the truth is we have changed our lifestyles so dramatically around food. And so many of us are always still looking for what's the next right thing to do? How do I really help myself? And how do I live into Hippocrates' declaration that, you know, food is thy medicine and medicine is thy food? We can use our nutrition in so many ways to do better and really make our lives better. So with that in mind, I'm thrilled to introduce you to our next guest. Liliana Partida is the uh, head nutritionist at the Center for New Medicine in Irvine, California, right next door. And she is an author and a speaker and a coach, and she has done everything there is possibly to do in the world of nutrition. We're honored to have you with us today, Liliana. Thank you for joining us. Oh, thank you so much, Lauren. I'm so happy to be here. And you get that this is a really, this is really deep for me. Food has always been a thing. <laughs> I think it's a thing for everyone. And you know, it should be looked at. It's something that we glorify, it's something that's still ritualistic in nature, because it, it, you know, it offers us so many things beyond just nutrition, right? It does. It's, it's love. It's, it's a certain, it's emotion. Connection. Absolutely. Right? It, yeah. So what do we do? So from my perspective, here's where, here's where I land. And I assume if I'm struggling with this, other people are too. Um, but if I'm stressed out, where do I go? the kitchen. I wish I could say I go to the kitchen to find something really like a carrot, but I don't. I go to the kitchen to find the carrot that's been cooked in honey and is, is sitting oh, yeah. there, yeah. you know, as part of a stew. But you have, you have addressed food in a way that not only makes it um, satisfying, it makes it healthy, and it helps us address things like stress eating or cravings or those nighttime munchies. I, I think that's where a lot of us are right now. Yeah, well, you know, it was interesting because when we were communicating, you know, and you were putting a title to this is getting back to our best self. And I really pondered upon it. And I thought, well, that implies somewhere we've lost ourselves along the way. And so often, you know, time, I always say to my patients, let time be your best friend, get to know it. Because when we get into a, a fast paced world, which we all have, uh, we put ourselves in the back burner, you know, all our obligations and our concerns and our expectations, they really get in the forefront. So often we, you know, overlook the simplest things. I always say, you know, if your child is hungry, you wouldn't say wait four hours. <laughs> if your child was sleepy, you wouldn't say, well, you, you got you, you don't sleep right now. You, you, you got to wait until, you know, you wouldn't do that. So, you know, we have lost the basic nature of recognizing that there is a little child within us and that we need to take the same consideration that we would for a child in regards of the way we conduct their day. We wouldn't go shopping without taking a snack for our child, for example. So if we kind of just get back to the basics of really recognizing there's uh, so many things that we can do for self-care that don't really take that much time you can kind of weave them into your day-to-day -day living and so when I think about you know yeah we lost ourself it's getting back to our authentic self which is that child self that has all the same needs that um we did when we were little as we do when we're an adult and it's a very deep subject so I always like to kind of go to the crux of it all let's go to the roots of it you know in regards to our relationship to food our relationships to ourself in that mindset of uh I would say if we have reverence for this body then we take um a moment to be mindful about number one what we're going to put on our body right because there's so many chemicals in the things we use uh what we're going to eat who we're going to surround ourselves, and so if we have that type of reverence, we would make so much, we would make so many different choices, right? 
but so how yeah. do you guide us to do that? Because I, I agree with you. It's, yeah. it's often a matter of time. It's a matter of, you know, you and I discussed, have you slept well? Yes. <laughs> well, yes. Yeah. Do you wake up feeling energized and refreshed or are you literally looking for that source of new energy? Coffee, but, right. <laughs> exactly. So, so guide us through a day that will um, take us back to our best selves, at least give us that, that structure and some, some really, you know, good ideas for how we could do better. Okay. Well, you, 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 well, you, you had a good lead in there. As far as a sleep, I always say a good day begins with a good night's sleep and all of us know how important sleep is, but do we really realize it impacts our immune system, our human growth hormone, our ability to repair our memory, our mental state of well being, and even our weight management. So I think, you know, we could start out with saying the night before we're already setting up for the next day to have a good day. And so I, you know, Average, we'd say seven to nine hours is really important. So we have to have sleep hygiene, to be quite honest with you. And of course, the older we get, you know, we just think we don't need the sleep because we can't get it because of our hormones. All right. Everybody would love to sleep seven, eight, nine hours. But yeah, good day. Right. But it's the ability for us to actually um, relax the, the, the nervous system to be able to calm down, to get that, you know, you know, deep sleep, REM sleep. And so I always say uh, sleep hygiene is super, super important. So again, at the end of the day, you just kind of start thinking about, you know, how I can release and let go of this day. So a good warm bath is always a fantastic and you know, maybe a little bit of minerals, essential oils in there. And then of course, to just kind of, you know, again, how do I move some of this energy out of me? So I always say, okay, well, I mean, my routine is, you know, I take a warm bath and I do some foam rolling so I can get the tension out of the fascia of my tissue from sitting in, you know, at the, my desk all day and leaning towards people, you know, in my consultations, right? And then, um, and then I, you know, make sure that my room, you know, is cool. We'd say about 65 degrees Fahrenheit is really the perfect temperature between 65 and 67. And so often, you know, people don't want to turn their air conditioning on because it costs a lot of money. But I say, you know what, anything for a good night's sleep, right? And then oftentimes they don't have the right kind of sheet. So, you know, if you've got a linen or bamboo or tensile, that makes it really nice. If you have a, a, a if you're a person that has, you know, menopausal symptoms and you're having night sweats, then oftentimes you can get a cooling pad, you know, that also helps. So just having those little teeny hacks, you know, making sure that the room is pitch black. And I always have to do a little bit of meditation or spiritual reading just to kind of, you know, if I, if I do too much scientific reading, my mind gets overactivated and cortisol stimulated. And then I find myself calculating in my mind, right? So I want to set that stage. And, you know, if I have a super busy day, I want to go ahead and write a, a to-do list so that I'm not stressing out and, and basically loop being in my head when I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that, right? Uh, I was like the night before I was literally wrestling with my mind and I'm like, wait a minute, I'm the master of this mind, you know? You can only do three things if you're awake. You can do breath work, you can do I am work, or you can talk to God. You got three things to do, right? And sometimes I have to do all three before I actually fall asleep in regards to the body being soothed, the nervous system calming down. So I think so many of us overlook, you know, the importance of sleep. And so again, one of the things I use is an aura ring and that aura ring is just helps to track, you know, what was the quality of your sleep? Because most people don't realize that, you know, let's say between 10 and 12 o'clock is when the brain is being cleared of all this amylotic tissue. Okay, well, we want to have a good memory. We got to, you know, sleep between that little golden hour and then you've got the repair cycle and then you have the detox cycle. So that 10 to four o'clock window is essential, right? So if we can just get to bed a little earlier and, you know, no blue lights from our computers and get all of that out of the way because it's so stimulating, then, you know, we set ourselves up for the next day in regards of what we're going to do. We got our to-do list, what's most important, right? And, um, and we, and we compassionately scrutinize it, you know, meaning that, you know, how do I feel? You know, what is my energy level? You know, you give yourself permission. We, we're talking about our authentic self. We give ourselves permission to check in. You know, maybe, you know, I didn't sleep as well as I wanted to. Well, instead of going out for a run, I'm going to do yoga today. I say, you know, rather than doing nothing, to say, what can I do with the energy and the time and what's available to me, right? And so, you know, giving yourself permission to scrutinize with compassion that 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 to do schedule and then look at um, 
how I intend to have it roll out. Because if we try to control it, we go into the anxiety state of it didn't go my way, you know, <laughs> yeah, being really flexible, you know, but trying to put that that most important thing in front and what might that be? I mean, for many people, it's different. For me, it's I got to get up first thing in the morning and do my workout. Otherwise, I won't get it done. For other people, it's getting up and getting their kids ready and getting their lunch ready. And da, 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 da. so they don't they haven't, you know, they haven't weaved themselves in to wake up a little bit earlier and maybe, you know, get that 15 minutes or 30 minutes of exercise in. And so it's, you know, a matter of discipline. But when you start doing things like any habit, your body starts yearning for it. It's like, you know, it's like a drug, you know, those endorphins. And it's like, come on, you know, you, you missed your workout two days and oh, let's get going. So you want to get into that mindset in regards to how, how, how is my body directing me in regards of what we would consider self-care? And if it's not, what have I left gone unnoticed? like a child, you know, am I feeding the neighbor's kids before I feed my own? Right. And so well, my mother always did that. So that was never a question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love, I love your, your approach and your answer to my question is just brilliant. And thank you because oh, welcome. nutrition doesn't start with food. No, 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 it really doesn't. And then that good night, yeah, and that good night sleep, it sets your blood sugar stable. If you're not sleeping well, cortisol level is rising and boy, you want to, you know, you've been utilizing all that glucose and, you know, insulin levels. So you wake up hungrier than you normally would. And so then this, you know, that's another thing that hijacks people is cravings, right? And so I say, okay, the best way to, you know, prevent cravings, and literally I can get people to stop cravings within one week. Right. And they're like, oh, my God, I never I was so addicted to sugar. I never thought that I could give up sugar. But we have what we call healthy swap outs. Right. The brain is like, you know, looking at all the five senses. Does it kind of look the same? Does it the texture the same? Does it kind of taste the same? So you can make so many things that don't have the impact of the glucose that you would normally have. Right. You make a keto bun instead of a 45 carbohydrate bagel. Right. So you really th first thing I say, we stabilize the glucose level. So, you know, if you like for me, I intermittent fast just because, you know, I'm 65. I want to stay young as possible. Right. So I do my little hacks and my body's gotten really used to them. So, um, like this is my, you know, my basically bulletproof tea here, right? So I've got some cream in it. It's the two bags of black tea and, and a little stevia. And that's all I'll have till about, let's just say it's 11. And then I'll grab a little handful of nuts. So those, you know, the little fat in the cream and the fat in the nuts stabilizes my brain in regards of, you know, fuel has a lot of calories, but it's still not stimulating insulin because right. it's just fat and it's liposomal. It moves across the cell wall without the need of insulin. So you're still in a, in a more fat burning state, which is great. So for, for those of us who aren't in reproductive states, or even if you are, but you're not trying to get pregnant, you know, intermittent fasting is just really a great way to start, you know, you know, calming down, uh, you know, the whole blood sugar, you know, roller coaster. But I always say, start out when you do eat, you know, some protein. So if you're doing animal, the palm size of the hand and thickness, no more, right? We know that excess of protein can age you really fast as well. And then you have a good healthy fat. So I always say like, you know, about two tablespoons of good healthy fats, whether they're avocado, nuts, seeds, oil, and then, and then surround the rest of your plate with all of these fiber rich foods so that your plate looks full and beautiful and it's appealing. It doesn't have you know, a little teeny bit of, you know, rice on there because those three tablespoons of rice equals that big salad and all those, all that broccoli on my plate, you know? So really distinguishing but between what is high sugar and what is low sugar. You know, I always tell, I say this is the most simplest way to look at. Anything that's low sugar when you put it in your mouth is not sweet at all. Like your broccoli and your cauliflower and your asparagus. And when you cook it, it shrinks in size. So anything that is bitter and shrink is going to shrink your problem, right? And as I always say, if you want to get thinner, then you use those bitter, better shrinking foods. And then on the opposite side, these are not bad food. These are just oftentimes foods that don't fit the paradigm of the mathema mathematical equation we're trying to have as blood sugar, right? And these foods are sweet to the palate, right? Your fruits, your sweet potatoes, and, and they're all great. But again, how much of them at any one given time? or things that get bigger like bread and bagels and pasta. So if you want to get bigger, you eat those foods. And if you want to shrink, you do the foods that go like this. And it that makes, makes it, simple. it so simple. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So let's talk about your book because okay. I know that even though um, you've, you've called it Liliana's Keto Cookbook, yeah. 
And what I've really learned from it is, you know, the term keto can be interpreted in so many different ways, but what you're really saying is what you just said now. Yes, absolutely. Things that make you not only feel good, but head you in the direction that you want to go. And the food can be beautiful and healthy. You've taken some unhealthy recipes and made that we love, of course, and made them healthy and we can still love them. So let's talk a little bit about the book. So our view, I want our viewers to know where to go and, and okay. where to find yeah, you. Yeah, beautiful. Well, the book was inspired by my patients. Uh, in, in our facility, we have a, a very large alternative clinic for cancer uh, prevention and treatment. So when I would be in my consultation with my patients, I'd be saying beautiful this and beautiful food and beautiful that. You're making me hungry, Liliana. And Don't you have a cookbook? And I thought, okay, you know what? I need a cookbook that can actually be utilized for anyone, you know, whether they want to lose weight or whether they have cancer and they need their blood sugar levels down or whether they have Alzheimer's disease. So, uh, so the keto aspect of it means no gluten at all and no sugar in my opinion. Right. And so it's going to be, uh, what I, what I call a more of a diet that we were born with would be the caveman style of eating. You know, we didn't have processed foods. We didn't have, have homogenation. We didn't have refrigeration. And so getting back to nature, one of the things you said was, you know, the way you grew up and, you know, was a lot of food that, you know, might've been frozen and, you know, those vegetables, but we, I grew up on a farm, so everything was farm to table. So I already had the palate. <laughs> my mother was an exceptional cook. So I took all that energy in my mother's cooking. I've traveled, I've lived in four different countries. And so all of the spices that were anti-inflammatory for my patients, the turmeric, the ginger, the lemongrass, the oregano, the cilantro. So I infused these foods with a lot of uh, anti-inflammatory. And then of course it's broken down. So it's very easy for someone to say, okay, this dish is, you know, per serving has got five carbs, you know, oh, this is great. This fits into any paradigm. And then of course, for those people who don't want to lose weight, um, then of course I would counsel them to have a little bit of sweet potato, a little bit of this and that. That'll be my next book is, uh, is, you know, the maintenance of it all. But so yeah. this book, book was really designed to treat, you know, anybody who is interested in anti-aging cancer, uh, you know, any, 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 any disease orientation. So, you know, just because it says keto, it doesn't mean, you know, it's loads of cheese and loads of fat and loads of everything. You know, I, th- I always, I say a clean keto modification of it all, right? Because we want to lean them eventually towards more of a Mediterranean modified as well. And Liliana, where can they find your actual book? Uh, on Amazon. Okay. Yeah. And so we'll post that too. And where can they find you? So I'm at the Center for New Medicine. And so I've been there for almost 20 years, if you can imagine that. <laughs> but also I have, they can follow me on Instagram or Facebook. Um, I have a, uh, I have a course that I do online and it's a seven week course on how to live your life. Uh, and every three months I roll out, uh, you know, a course in regards of um, getting more people, you know, invited to the tribe. So that's something that's called uh, six pillars to keto sacking one pillar building upon the next pillar that ends you up in more of the Mediterranean mindset. But We start out with uh, really addressing, you know, what is our basic goals on all levels, body, mind, spirit, because I believe that if you don't have your belief systems in order, you never can be your authentic self. And if you don't have your health, you've got absolutely nothing. You have nothing. So much for contributing for all of us. You know, anti-aging is the term, but honestly, we all just want to live our very best lives. Yeah, with a good mental acuity and lots of energy, right? And great sleep. Thank you yes. for all of that information. <laughs> Juliana, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate you and we'll look forward to seeing you again. Okay. Thank you, Lauren.